What's going on guys and welcome back. We are up at Bruce's super, super, super top secret snowmobile building facility here. And uh, we are here to talk about some technical stuff. Last year when the 23s were released, we talked about some suspension changes that were coming in the VR1 Boost. And a lot of you guys jumped on that and loved how technical we got and really explained in depth of what was going on. So that is what we have here today. And we have the one and only Bruce to explain it all. Hey guys, we got a lot of good stuff to go over. We have a standard naturally aspirated VR1 rear skid, and then we have a boost VR1 skid. So this video, we're gonna talk about what changed from the boost skid or the naturally aspirated skid to the boost skid, but we're also gonna talk about just the geometry of how the suspension works in general, because not a lot of times I mean, yes, you see it, and when you sit on the sled, you see it, but you don't see it go through the motions. You don't see it completely, um, you know, go through the range of motion. So um, Bruce had these very fancy bars built for both sleds, and they are the exact dimension of how they bolt into your sled. You know, so same distance apart. So obviously, as one end moves, you know, it's going to affect the other one. Because if you just had this here and you didn't have them attached... It wouldn't, you know, obviously you're just going to be working one side of it, but you're going to see when we start going through the motions of these that they do affect, you know, the front affects the back, the back affects, affects the front. So we, uh, we sharpened up our pencils and we got as much detail oriented version of this as we possibly can. We took the, uh, the springs off the front track shock so we could go through that and we took off the rear torsion springs so again we could go through the entire range of motion and show you guys what actually happens so when we're talking about coupler blocks which is our main point of this conversation you're going to be able to see oh that's what that actually does or that's what that actually does so bruce as always is our you know main tech guy on this stuff and he's going to go into detail of what what's changed what is what what does what bruce okay guys so we finally got a bunch of boost product in. So we got one of the rears ripped out because we had to do some shock valving for a guy that's a little heavier guy. We knew we were gonna have to do something. So while we had it out, perfect time to compare the two. Uh, this one, the stock VR one is a 137. This is a 129. It doesn't matter as far as <clears throat> geometry or anything. It doesn't change at all. It's just a matter of we were we were working on a 129 boost and I had a 137 VR out. Right. They're just longer. <clears throat> yep. At the tail. That's all it is. Yep. That's the, it. From the coupler blocks forward, it's all the same. Yeah. It just stretched out a little bit. So you know you're dealing with about three inches of of suspension difference on the ground. <clears throat> so when you look at these, we're gonna we're gonna talk about what what happens when you hit the throttle, and then what happens when you hit a bump. So what they did from a VR, here's our, here's our coupler blocks, our front scissor stop, which used to be blocks like this in the back, back in the day, but now it is just a, a tube, which, change, which is the front scissor stop. And we'll show you what that does in a minute. But the rear scissor stop blocks have not changed in years, years and years and years. So Right now, I have these set so that this will, when I move, it goes, this is the lower lower portion, this is the medium, and this is the high. The way they come from a factory, commonly a VR1 is set on medium, so these blocks would be set forward like this, whereas on an XCR, it's uh, high, so this would be to the front, or where the little dot is, is high. So it's all, what that does is it sets how far this arm is gonna go back when you hit the throttle. And that's kind of the reason when we, when we go into the boost, why they did what they did. So I'm gonna start with the original and then I'm gonna go to the boost and show you. So in essence, these blocks are transfer blocks or rear scissor stop blocks. So when you hit the throttle on these sleds, the, what's gonna happen, you're sitting on the back of the sled, yes, your torsion springs are on here. They could be set on, they could be set on low, they could be set on medium, or they could be set on high. Those are things that we've talked about plenty of times. But without the springs on there, we're gonna push down and this and you're gonna see what happens. 
So when you are, you grab a handful of gas and you're sitting on the back of the sled, this goes down, hits those blocks, and then this is gonna go a certain amount between your weight and the power of the sled as far as how much it's gonna rock back and lift the skis and go across the lake. Or uh, what you don't want to happen is if it's like that and you're going in the trail and you wanna be able to turn. But we're gonna talk about it as we're hitting the gas and we're gonna go across the lake. So you got your, you sit on the back of the sled, you grab a handful of gas, it goes down, it hits this and it settles down and it just rocks and it sits there until you let go of the gas pretty much. Well, when you have this set on low, it's gonna transfer more. So it's gonna lift the skis more because what happens when you hit the gas is not only does that happen, but the, the way the suspension works is it's, tr it's pushing the front of this down as hard as it can on the, on the track so that it wants to lift. So the back's going down and the front's pushing hard. So it's picking the nose. And what that does is co it's controlled also by this strap, which we've talked about a bunch of times is the length of this strap. Yep, your limiter strap. Yeah. And we talk about it as far as should we shorten it so that it doesn't push down as far so we can turn and all that. But right now we're talking about stock, how it's set up, hit the gas, goes back to the transfer blocks, it sits here and it's just wheeling until you let off on the gas mm -hmm. and this come back up and the skis come back down again. So with that happening, here's low, here's medium, here's high. So when you push down, the farther this can go back, the more it's gonna wheelie. When you have this on medium, both of them on medium, I'm just gonna do one. It goes like this, it stops sooner. So it makes it, it makes the spring a little stiffer. So it keeps it from transferring a little bit more. And then when you go to high, it hits like this. And again, stops it more, makes it stiffer. And actually, when you go to high and this goes through its travel, it actually will push the nose just a little bit. So it just, just from geometry, it's pushing down, or should I say, <clears throat> wanting to lift the front of the. Right. So you're actually shortening. Shortening that strap. So, so you're it pulling the takes, front of it off. Right. Takes a little pressure off of the nose. Right. So again, it, <clears throat> with this on high, it's least amount of transfer and also picks it up a little bit so it doesn't want to pick the skis. Mm -hmm. Which goes into, with the boost here, We've got these new blocks, which are a four-sided block. That is, that's square, so it's a four-sided block. Right, it but there's only has two blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> this one actually has four, four different settings. sides. Right. So this is actually set on the highest setting, and you can pull these blocks and twist it, and it snaps back into another block like that. So this is the highest setting forward. So this here literally hits very quickly. You hit the gas, it hits there. So in other words, least amount of transfer because it's gonna hit that, it's gonna use this spring <clears throat> and being that it's so far forward, it actually pushes it or pulls that and takes that much pressure off of that before it goes beyond and actually comes back up just mm -hmm. because of geometry. Probably wouldn't get that far. Right. But so in other words, least amount of transfer. This is. <clears throat> this is a crazy amount of block for less transfer. And the reason why they did that, your turbo. But you know, more power, more pull, you get on the turbo, it would be on the it would be on the rear idlers all the way across the lake, which yeah. obviously you don't want that. You want it to be kind of more like a dart. Yeah, a bullet. But you're <clears throat> but in essence, we're dealing with uh, with this block. We're dealing with a hundred thousandths of change between low on this side or on this one, it's sitting over here, mm -hmm. to medium is another 100, and to the, the high, it's another 100. So for years, that's what it's been, 100,000 to change. And it, and it does make a change. If somebody reaches back there and makes these changes, it does change how much transfer and kind of how stiff that rear is because it's how quick it starts using the spring. Because it, it hits this, and then and it starts using the spring. So it does make a difference. What they did with this is the low, which is this one here, so one dot, is very similar to the one dot on that. So call that equal. You go to number two dot, like this here, it immediately goes from low to high. There's no medium. 
So in comparison to the VR1, low to high. So we're talking 200 thousandths right here because we're going from low to high as we would have there. So then we jump to three block. Three block is another 125 thousandths from the high we've been used to over the years. So again, big change and, and, and a place we've never been. When we go to four block, the four dot, we are 300 thousandths more than high had ever been. On your standard stuff. On your standard stuff. So, I mean, you are dealing with a quick hit. That's Instant how, hit, yeah. that's how quick it does that. So least amount of transfer and then, and then takes that kind of force. And that kind of force is actually using not only the two springs, but it's using the third spring when that happens. So <clears throat> it is really not going to want to transfer. Idea is when you hit the throttle, you're not on the tail of the sled when this thing's, you know, going across the lake in a turbo, mm -hmm. which <clears throat> most of us hasn't felt that yet, right. which we're going to feel. <laughs> yeah, shortly. We are, we are going to do it. Yeah, shortly. Yeah. And then the other thing, and we've talked about it a lot, and we talk about suspension and cornering and everything else. <clears throat> when you come out of a corner and this suspension unloads itself and you get back in the throttle, that's what's going to happen right there. Yeah. So, so if, you, if you're on low setting... Well, you, you guys see, all saw what happened here. Nothing really happened. It's going to pick this end up. Well, now that yep. it's on four, it's going to, or it's going to pick that end up and bury that. I'm sorry, it doesn't pick this one up. Right. So on low, like this one is, or like low would be on that, you hit this <clears throat> super easy. Goes right down through. <clears throat> doesn't touch the front arm at all. Mm -hmm. Compared to four dot, which is now way beyond what we've ever had. It's You hit the gas, boom. It's there, and then it starts using... Three springs. Yeah. So it is not going to want to squat. But <clears throat> the question is going to be, which I don't know, and we're going to feel it, and we're going to find out. But what is that going to do for, okay, yeah, that was great. You know, we are fooling around on the lake. Well, what's that going to do in the trail when I go ripping down the trail and we go through the bumps? Because now we're going to talk about the front arm of this sled, which is what sets us up for those bumps. You know, when we... The first thing we do, we, we go into the trail, we see that first bump, what hits it is right here. This is what hits it. And <clears throat> that's why people say a lot to me when they call me and they say, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly just blowing through the front of this. You and feel I feel it, it right in my feet. Feel it right in your heels. I mean, two, a couple of years ago, I hurt my heels and it took me all winter long to, to straighten that out. <laughs> and it was because it was too soft. And, and yes, these springs will affect that. You're gonna see that in a second. So you come through, I'm going to push down on this in real, realistically, you're hitting the bump is going to come up, but I'm pushing down. So it's the same effect. So <clears throat> you hit that bump, it, it starts using this spring. Well, it is, it is already using that rear spring because it affects where this rear scissor stop is, or should I say front scissor stop used to be a block. Now it's a bar. So <clears throat> when you hit that, when you hit that bump, as soon as it hits, it starts not only using this spring, but it's using the two springs here. And it starts going through, and what it is doing is <clears throat> it hits this bump, it picks this arm up, and it pulls that down so it kind of it kind of angles that rear suspension so that when it's hitting that bump, that rear isn't hanging out there and you're gonna hit it again. So you hit the bump here, and then in the old days you would hit it here. Well now you're gonna hit it here but it's, it's already pulling that rear up, so it's angling it to miss that bump or to go over it. So that's where that coupling comes in, which everybody talks about. So front arm hit is pulling and using that rear. So <clears throat> all this talk we've been doing about torsion springs and your right weight and all that, it's not, <clears throat> it's not only holding you up, which is the real deal we'll go to when we talk about how much sag we want in the sled, which is a kind of that three inch number. Sled sitting there, we'll go over to the sled and we'll talk about it. <clears throat> but it's not only that sag, but it's also, okay, I start hitting bumps, I'm hitting it with this arm, but I'm starting to use that spring. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that spring is getting used all the time, front arm, rear arm. And, and it's gonna be used with this too. It's, it, you know, this is the same thing, so 129, same thing's gonna happen because one thing that hasn't changed between these two suspensions is the, the point of placement of where this front scissor stop is, which is this bar. <clears throat> that hasn't changed at all between the two. 
this is all gonna work the same. The thing that's, <clears throat> the thing to change is these rear um, transfer blocks or rear, rear scissor stop blocks. And that's all about, okay, we're hitting the gas, boom. How far right is it gonna lean back when you go across the lake? <clears throat> but it also is going to affect, you leave it there like that and you go to hammer down the trails. How much is this gonna, how much is this going to affect my ride? And it's going to affect you more if you're not sprung correctly. Because right. the light- well, let's show, Yeah, let's show them <clears throat> how to get jammed down there if it's not sprung right. right. Yeah, if you if this isn't sprung right, so we got you know the stock springs from last year's XCR, and perfect example. And you're two forty. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So this thing, you get on the gas. This thing is just going like this. So I get shocks in all the time, and they're all dinged up right here and right here. And they say, well, why is that mark there? Well, one, you know, your, your studs are placed and they're towards the center of the track. Well, this thing, this thing goes flat. I mean, this is like this. That track is is like a rubber band like around that mm -hmm. and it is just skimming and it's gonna run right, right over the top yeah. right across the top of those wheels right across that because the track obviously there's a whip is concerned so the track is going like this and it's just hitting against the top of that so when that happens it's because you're just too far down in the stroke Look, i mean it's stuck you're not even holding it it was yeah. stuck there well that's yeah that's part of the geometry of this because right. only because of this three hundred thousand. correct track. yeah right but what we were talking about is if you are undersprung you can get down there and it's just it's mechanically it doesn't want to come back yeah, up. If you don't have enough spring rate, it's gonna get stuck down there and it's not gonna come yeah, it's between, not gonna come between back. Between power of the sled and then your weight. weight. You. It, it's it's down. Mm -hmm. And then you go you go down the straightaway and then you start hitting bumps. Well now you're already right. You're already you're, you're already, already, already compressed right all the way. So you're just you're just coming right off of those blocks. Right. So So and that's and uh, we've talked about it before, but obviously your torsion springs are normally here, but that's your torsion spring comes in contact with that. Yep. If you buy, if you go down far enough, mm -hmm. and same with up here, it's going to be your front torque arm is going to come in contact with these stoppers. Yes. Yeah. When when you bottom out in the front, it's that front arm hitting that block. Uh -huh. You know, it's just like boom. You know, right off it because this is too soft, or the valving is too soft, or you haven't adjusted properly. But again, these springs have a lot to do with it all. Because we are dealing with with using all of the springs, so it's not just this; it's it's these, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the springs that come on an XCR or on a VR1 are on the soft side. You know they're just for again depending on the what riding you're doing, but it doesn't take anything to be a hundred and sixty or seventy pound rider and have those springs not be enough if you're going down the trails hard. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. I mean, we saw it last year. And again, you guys could go back and I mean. Over and over. I got boxes of those springs. <laughs> boxes and boxes. Yeah. But either way, we wanted to, and again, finally, we finally got some boost in. So we were able to actually see exactly what they did. And before we end this off and before I do my closing statement, they did change the rail profile. That's in the same exact location. They just yeah. changed the profile. They beefed it up yeah. a little bit. Here to here is the same. From here to here is the same. So it's no different from this. Right. It's all about the distance from the center line of this bolt to where these are to where this is going to hit. And, and again, we're dealing with low, same as the old low. Number two, same as the old high. Three and four are well above what we ever had. What we ever had. So it's, it's new ground where it's going to, what it's going to feel like if it's there and we're going through the bumps. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to find that out. Jesse's going to have a boost, a bunch, you know, unless I take it back. And, um, <laughs> if I even, if I'm allowed to take it if home. If you're allowed to even take it home. Yeah. <laughs> so when we do that, we, we do, we really want to know what that's going to be like, because it's going to change what we do to the shock. You know, you say, well, yeah, it's too soft or it's too stiff. Well, it's going to affect where you have that block, what that feels like as far as that stiffness in that first movement, because where you have that, that's that first movement as far as how much spring it's using. So it is new ground because of how much that's changed. And, um, you know, feedback from you guys, it, it's all huge to us. And on us riding and then telling you what we're feeling so that we can make it so that when you go out, it's, it's the way we all want it. Right. Yeah. And again, Adam, we've touched on this. And when me and Bruce first got together, you know, our big thing was 
listen, our seasons are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So let's try and get these things to work as good as possible. So your short season, if you have a super short season, is the most enjoyable as you possibly can. So this, everything that we're doing, I mean, this is, you know, we're trying to teach you guys as much as we possibly can. So it's hard and you guys reach out to me all the time. Well, what springs should I do? And, you know, I ask a million questions on the way back of, well, how about this and wait and what kind of riding and X, Y, Z. And it's unfortunately, it's never an easy answer for us to ask or answer question for us to answer, I should say. And yeah, this make, is this is why. Make, or we make the videos too long. Yeah, or we make the videos too long. We could just go and yeah. go on yeah. this. This was, you know, a quick. Uh, right, and we're 20 we, minutes in. Yeah, we're 20 minutes in. And, so, and, and we got, there's way more to talk about. Yeah. And so, I mean, again, it's not an, it's not an easy question for us to answer. And we're trying to do our best to get back to you guys and, and give you guys the most definite and, and straight path to go on. But either way, this is how your, your VR1 suspensions work. This is how your boost suspensions now work with the new rear couplers, everything else the same, like we talked about. But uh, that should give you guys a better understanding of how these things work and why we do what we do and what affects what. So if you guys have any questions, as always, put them down in the comments. I will get back to you. Shoot me a message on Facebook. Shoot me a message on Instagram, whatever. Um, you know, we're here to help you guys. We're here to make that season as enjoyable as possible. And uh, that's going to do it, guys. So uh, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to go to 322threads.com and get all your merch. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.